So we've just reached 100 subscribers. And by just reached, I mean reached a few days ago because now we are like at 177 or something at the time I posted this, which is very amazing. It, it's growing so fast. So thank you guys for this. And today we'll talk about this interval. A while back, I made, I made a video about this interval and it is now my most popular video today with about 2,000 views, which is amazing. And also thanks for all the numerous positive com comments down there in this video. And in the comments, some people pointed out that this interval could be nicely done with Feynman's trick for integration, also known as the Leibniz rule for integration. And I tried it out for myself using that way and I found it really clever, which is why I, deci I decided to present it to you guys. So just as a reminder, here we have an interval from zero to infinity of natural log of e to the x plus one over e to the x minus one. And what we will do is we will call this interval i, i for interval. And now we will define ourselves a function i of t as the interval from zero to infinity of the natural log of e to the x plus t over e to the x minus 1 dx. And now we will rewrite our interval in a little bit. So we will rewrite it as the interval from 0 to infinity of. And then we will use logarithmic properties to split this logarithm into two logarithms, namely natural log of e to the x plus t minus natural log of e to the x minus 1. And then what we will do is we will differentiate this interval with respect to t. So what, so what happens if we take a look at i prime of t? Well, we'll have the interval from 0 to infinity of, by the line is for integration, we can bring the partial derivative into the interval. Well, it's a derivative, but then inside the interval it becomes a partial derivative of natural log of e to the x plus t minus natural log of e to the x minus 1 dx. And then, natural log of e to the x minus 1 is a constant with respect to t. Hence, it will go to 0 because of the derivative, and it will be left with the interval from 0 to infinity of 1 over e to the x plus t dx. Because we are differentiating with respect to t. And now what we will do is we will multiply our integrand and then divide it by e to the x. Why is this, why is this good? Well, now we can introduce a substitution. So we will let some u be e to the x plus t, which means t du will be e to the x dx, which is exactly what we have up there. And now, if we subtract t from both sides, we get e to the x is equal to u minus t. And now we are ready to plug in everything that we need. So at 0, we'll get e to the 0, the 0 is 1, so t plus 1. At infinity, we'll get, well, e to the infinity, infinity, infinity plus anything is infinity, except if, if, that, plus, if that thing is negative infinity. <laughs> Never mind, so we get 1 over u times u minus t du. And then this right here can is an integral that can be evaluated using partial fractions decomposition. So this is what we will do. So we'll have 1 over u times u minus t and we want to express it as some a over u plus some b over u minus t. Now we'll multiply both sides by u times u minus t to get a times u minus t plus b times u is equal to 1. And now what happens if we let u be equal to 0? So if u is equal to 0, then we get b times 0 is 0, because anything multiplied by 0 is 0, until, unless that 0 is infinity. Never mind. We'll, okay. As I was saying, a times negative t is equal to 1, which means a will be negative 1 over t. So this will be negative 1 over t. And then what happens if u is equal to t? So if u is equal to t, we get 
t minus t is 0, 0 times a is 0. So we'll get b times t is equal to 1, which means b will be 1 over t. So this is 1 over t. And now we can substitute everything in. So we get, as our i prime of t, the integral from t plus 1 to infinity of, we'll factor out the 1 over t because it's a common factor, 1 over t. And then we'll have 1 over u minus t minus 1 over u du. And then, if we were to split this into two integrals, using uh, because and then subtract them we would get infinity minus infinity because this is a divergent interval this is a divergent interval infinity minus infinity is as you know a, an indeterminate form which means we'll have to use the limits for this so we'll rewrite this interval as one over t limit a equals to infinity of okay and now we'll split this interval into two so we get the interval from t plus one to a of 1 over u minus t du minus the integral from t plus 1 to a of 1 over u d. Okay, so let me use different colors. This integral is equal to, what is this equal to? Well, we have the natural log of u minus t evaluated at t plus 1 and a. And now, if we plug in a, we get the natural log of a minus t. I'll drop the absolute value signs there. And if we plug in t plus 1, we get natural log of t plus 1 minus t. t is cancelled out and we get natural log of 1, which is just 0. So at t plus 1, this goes to 0. But then what about our second interval? Namely, the interval from t plus 1 to a of 1 over u. Well, this is just natural log of absolute value of u evaluated t plus 1 in a, which is just natural log of a minus natural log of t plus 1. And now, what we will do is, we will just well, substitute, substitute in what we have found. So we get 1 over t, limit as a goes to infinity, of natural log of a minus t, that you with a negative sign, we get a negative natural log of a, plus natural log of t plus 1. But then, let me do this in red. In red. We can combine these two terms by logarithmic properties into one logarithm, namely natural, the natural log, not ln, ln, of 1 minus t over a, because a over a is 1, t over a is, well, t over a. As a goes to infinity, t over a goes to 0, 1 minus 0 is 1, natural log of 1 is 0. So, this whole bit goes to zero, and we are left with our natural log of t plus one. Hence, our i prime of t is equal to one over t natural log of t plus one. And now, how can we use this to get back to our original i? So, our i will be the interval, well, it will be a definite interval, but we don't know what our bounds are yet. So definite interval of natural log, 1 over t natural log of t plus 1 dt. And now what we want to do is, well, if our bounds are a and b, then by the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2, this will be i of b minus i of a. But then we want to choose our two bounds smartly so that one of the bounds goes to zero, and the other gives us the original integral that we desire. So we see that if we plug in t equals to 1, we get natural log of e to the x plus 1 over e to the x minus 1, which is exactly what we have right here. So we want one of our bounds to be 1. So let's make that the upper bound to be 1. But honestly, it really doesn't matter. So have a 1 there. And then when does i of t equal 0? Well, if we let t be equal to negative 1, we, ha we have natural log of e to the x minus 1 over e to the x minus 1. The inside will be 1, and the natural log of 1 is just 0, and the definite interval over 0 is just 0. So we'll choose our lower bound to be negative 1. So hence, we have 
another interval representation for our i. Good. And now, what we will do is we'll consider the Maclaurin series expansion of natural log of 1 plus t. So let me do this in blue, like this. So we know that the natural log of t plus 1 is equal to the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity. Well, that was an ugly signal. It looked like a gamma of some sort, like capital gamma. The sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n plus 1 times t to the n plus 1 for t lying in the interval from negative 1 to 1, including 1 but not including negative 1. And we see that we are integrating from 1 to negative 1, which means we have to take into consideration negative 1, which is disallowed right there. But we can just use some limit argumentation to see that we can indeed plug this in without angering the goals of mathematics. Probably making them a little bit impatient, but not a uh, not full out anger. So we'll get the integral from negative 1 to 1 of the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n plus 1 of, okay, so we'll have t to the n plus 1 divided by t, which is just t to the n. All of this with respect to t. And now, we will interchange the infinite series and the integral sign, assuming we can interchange the infinite series and the integral sign, to get the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n plus 1 times the interval from negative 1 to 1 of t to the n dt. So let me just do this separately. So we have, um, let me make some space over there. So interval from negative 1 to 1 of t to the n dt. Well, I'll just use the parallel. So this is t to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 evaluated at negative 1 and 1, so we get 1 over n plus 1, it's 1 to the power of anything is 1, except if that power if is infinity, why am I going so much into determinate forms, minus, minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. But then we can, uh, but then, minus 1 to the n plus 1 is negative 1 to the n times minus 1, minus minus become plus, so we get 1 over n plus 1 times 1 plus negative 1 to the n. So now we get the sum. That was an ugly sigma. Again, I don't know why my sigmas are so ugly today. Sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n plus 1 whole thing squared, because n plus 1 is n plus 1, times 1 plus negative 1 to the n. But then we can distribute this negative 1 to the n to get negative 1 to the n minus 1 is negative 1 to the n negative 1 times uh, to the n times negative 1 to the n is negative 1 to the 2n which is 1 so this part remains basically unchanged and we can have a 1 instead of negative 1 to the n right there and now wouldn't it be nice if we got rid of that part somehow well let's see if n is odd. We'll have 1 plus negative 1, which is 0. So at odd ends, our, this term, this quantity will vanish. And at even ends, we'll have 1 plus 1, which is 2. So we'll have 2 times this quantity evaluated at the corresponding value of n. So basically, all our odd terms vanish and all our even terms will get multiplied by 2. So we can pull out that factor of 2 and we'll have the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of all the even terms. So we'll have our sum starting at 0 and going to infinity of 1 over 2n plus 1 whole thing squared. 2n because of the even terms. And then we have reached a point where the rest of the workings where the rest of the work is exactly the same as in the video I have done an interval on, which means we can already skip the answer and save some time 
to get an answer of pi squared over 4, just as before, because answers in mathematics don't tend to magically change depending on where you know, on what you're doing. So, yeah, there was this was pretty clever, and it also fitted in one board. I believe in the last video I had to use two boards to get this integral done. So this is this is the video. Uh, this is the video. Thank you guys for watching my video. This video, don't forget to share this one in the next video. Bye. Oh, you're still there. Well, you're really dedicated. Thank you for that, but the video is over. You can go away now. Just erase this. You're still there. Yeah, I go away. I need the video is over. I don't know what you're what you're doing here anymore. You're still there. Well, the video is over. Just just go away. I'll do it on the